Okay, so let's now look at the details of what happens during the electron transport chain. We start from complex one. So complex one here is often referred to as um, NADH dehydrogenase. That's another name uh, used to refer to complex one. With complex one, we start with a molecule of NADH. And what happens is that complex one um, oxidizes this NADH molecule to produce NAD and a proton. This oxidation process leads to the release of two electrons and these two electrons are seized or are taken up by flavin mononucleotide which I will denote here as FMN. The uptake of these two electrons by, by flavin mononucleotide reduces flavin mononucleotide um, and reduced flavin mononucleotide is denoted as FMNH2. Now flavin mononucleotide then um, passes on the electrons to an ion sulfur cluster and the electrons are further and are then now passed on to ubiquinone, um, which is denoted often as UQ or just Q. Now ubiquinone is not a protein, um, but it's a molecule which is um, membrane soluble. Um, and ubiquinone is what is the molecule that will transport um, the, these two electrons here uh, to to uh, subsequent um, to subsequent membrane complexes. So ubiquinone is now is now oxidized to ubiquinol, and ubiquinol is denoted as QH two. Now we're going to skip complex two for now because the reality is. The reality is that um, complex two is not involved in the oxidation of um, in the oxidation of NADH. So what really happens here is that ubiquinol it binds to an active site on complex three. Let's quickly um, look at the nomenclature of complex three. So complex three is often uh, known as cytochrome BC1 complex. All right. Now, the problem with the problem that ensues here at complex three is that complex three is not able to, or the proteins within complex three are not able to uh, transport electrons. Uh, in pairs to the next uh, to the next protein complex and so the problem that needs to be solved in complex 3 is to split the electrons here uh, in uh, found in ubiquinol into sing into single electrons so that um, they can be transported as single electrons rather than um, pairs of electrons now and so in order to do this, what happens is that there a process a process has evolved uh, to split these two electrons known as the Q cycle. And I'm going to go through the Q cycle with you now. So let's begin. So the first step of Q cycle, step one of Q cycle, we have the splitting of the electrons um, brought to uh, complex three by ubiquinol. Um, 
into into single into single electrons. Now one electron is sent to um, an ion sulfur cluster or a protein that has an ion sulfur cluster um, complex known as Risque. And Risque uh, in turn passes the electron on to a protein known as cytochrome C1. Cytochrome C1 then passes the electron to a water soluble protein or to a membrane soluble protein uh, known as cytochrome C. Okay, and cytochrome C, um, as I said, is water soluble, and it's not. It doesn't. Uh, it's, it doesn't have a fixed position in the membrane as say complex three. Now cytochrome C is not to be confused with cytochrome C one. Okay, so the electron that is passed on to cytochrome C. Cytochrome C here is now ready to be transported to the next uh, protein complex in the electron transport chain. So what happens to this uh, other electron? Well, what happens here is that uh, this electron is passed on to cytochrome B. Uh, to be more precise, what happens here is that this electron is passed on to a BL heme group and then a BH heme group, but it's all within cytochrome B. At this point, this ubiquinol has been um, has been oxidized back to ubiquinone. Okay. It's been oxidized back to ubiquinone and ubiquinone has an active site here on the same complex 3 protein so now ubiquinone has bound to another active site here what happens is that this electron is passed back on to ubiquinone and that marks the end um, and that marks the end of the step one stage of the Q cycle. Please note that once an electron has been received by ubiquinone, it is converted into semiquinone. Semiquinone is denoted by Q minus. I'm going to describe step two of the Q cycle now. The second step of the Q cycle is almost identical to the first step. So what I'll do now is I will uh, copy and paste um, what we've already done for the first step. Alright, so second step. During the second step, you should understand that we would have um, a ubiquinone bound to the second active site of complex 3. Furthermore, you should know or you should understand that there is the binding of a second ubiquinol at the first active site. Okay, so this this here is a second ubiquinol. All right, so it's not the first one. It's another. It's another ubiquinol. Uh, so it's another ubiquinol that has come from um, the complex one. It's a second one, not the same one. Right. 
So what happens to that ubiquinol? The exact same thing happens uh, as happened in step one. So the electrons in ubiquinol are ripped out from it or are ripped from it. Uh, one uh, is transported to the ion sulfur clusters within RISC-A, the RISC-A protein, and one is transported to cytochrome, the cytochrome B complex, or the heme groups within the cytochrome B complex. Exact, this, the exact same thing as happens in step one. Obviously, the electrons um, recruited by risk risk a um, are passed on to uh, cytochrome c1 and that electron is passed on to cytochrome c ready to be moved on to the next uh, protein complex in the electron transport chain now the electron that is transported to um, the heme groups in cytochrome b is then transported to or is then passed on to uh, semi semiquinone okay now understand that at this point semiquinone already has it's basically ubiquin it's basically a ubiquinone molecule that has an extra electron so the addition of this second electron will convert semi-equinone will convert semi-equinone to ubiquinol okay and this ubiquinol will be recycled back here for the splitting of electrons to occur um, and then electrons passed on. So this is a very convoluted way that we have evolved uh, as animals to um, transport one electron at a time here at, um, the, at the complex three, uh, at the protein complex three in the electron transport chain. So let's move on to complex four. So complex four of the electron transport chain um, is referred to as cytochrome C, cytochrome C oxidase. And as the name implies, complex four oxidizes um, reduced cytochrome C. So here you have Cytochrome C binding reduce cytochrome C binding to uh, complex four or and site and uh, complex four um, oxidizes it, hence its name cytochrome C oxidases oxidase. Okay, so what happens at this stage? So it's important that you understand that although one electron is passed on from complex three to complex four at a time, complex four waits for two cytochrome C's or two reduced cytochrome C's to bind to it before anything happens. So once two cytochrome C, uh, reduced cytochrome C molecules are bound to um, complex four, then you have two electrons passed on to the copper A um, to the copper A molecule the copper A region of the complex four. Now these two electrons further passed on to uh, the ion to an ion copper complex and then again two electrons are passed on to uh, copper B a copper B region of the molecule now it is at this stage that these electrons 
are used to um, convert half a molecule of oxygen to water. Obviously, um, two protons are involved in the process as well. And then you end up with the production of water. And so what happens here is that these electrons, these, elect these two electrons uh, react with uh, half a molecule of oxygen to then form water. And so it is said that uh, oxygen is the uh, final um, electron acceptor in the electron transport chain all right and you end up in the production of water fantastic so it's important to understand that the energy uh, released when electrons are transported um, in complex one complex 3 and complex 4 then when these electrons are being transported across these complexes energy is uh, free energy is released and this free energy is used to pump or shuttle um, hydrogen or sorry protons I used to shuttle protons across the inner membrane okay so here we have protons being uh, pumped across the inner membrane and here as well okay so four protons are pumped um, in complex one same for complex three and only two protons uh, are pumped um, when electrons are passed through complex four and so in the end we have a total of 10 protons uh, being pumped into the intermembrane space um, during um, when one molecule of NADH when one molecule of NADH is oxidized um, in the electron transport chain right so at this point you probably be asking wait hold on so what happens to complex 2 what is the function of complex 2 okay let's see what complex 2 does so complex 2 is referred to as succinate dehydrogenase now succinate dehydrogenase is uh, an enzyme involved in uh, involved in the Krebs cycle but has a secondary function or has a second function and that is to oxidize FADH2 to FAD now that leads to the release of two electrons and those two electrons bind to iron sulfur clusters within the protein complex and again the two electrons are transported to a ubiquinone molecule just like what happens in complex one and that ubiquinone molecule um, is uh, reduced to ubiquinone and that ubiquinone molecule then uh, is passed on to complex three where it releases its electrons just like what happens in complex one and so it is uh, crucial that you understand that because the reduction of FADH2 to FAD skips complex one it produces it ends up in the pumping of less protons into the intermembrane space okay now 
and so what happens is that you end up with, with the release or with the pumping of just six protons into the intermembrane space when it comes to the reduction of FADH2 to FAD just because you've missed out uh, complex one and there you have it there you have your have, we've gone through the electron transport chain the proteins or the protein complexes involved in this process the number of protons pumped uh, into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria during this process so the next step is to look at what happens to these proteins and how uh, these proteins or this proton gradient leads to the production of uh, tons and tons of ATP. Okay, so now let's move on to try to understand the, oxy, the oxidative phosphorylation process. So as I mentioned earlier on, in this process, um, what, what happens is that there is the um, there is the flow of protons from a region of higher concentration in the intermembrane uh, space of the mitochondria to a region of lower concentration and this flow of electrons produces the energy for the synthesis of ATP and the synthesis of ATP is catalyzed by an enzyme complex known as ATP synthase. Now to fully understand or to fully appreciate how ATP synthase catalyzes this reaction, we need to dive into the actual structure of this special um, enzyme complex. Okay, so Um, what happens during the oxidative phosphorylation process? Um, what happens is that, as I said, there is a movement of um, protons from a region of higher concentration down the gradient. So you have these protons making their way down. So we have these protons making their way down concentration gradients but through this enzyme complex or through the ATPase enzyme complex. Now the protons pass through the um, alpha subunit, the alpha subunit of uh, the ATPase enzyme complex. So the alpha subunit and um, as they pass through the alpha subunits, they go round this rotor. They go round this rotor unit here and then back down. And then back into the alpha subunit and down and out into the mitochondrial matrix. But the binding of uh, the protons to various active sites in the rotor, in the rotor unit, um, or also known as the C ring, of the ATP, uh, AT, ATP enzyme, ATP synthase enzyme complex. Uh, causes the C-ring to rotate and it and this rotation leads to confirmation conformational change in the beta in the beta um, in the beta components of the um, stator unit and the conformational change in the stator unit of the ATP uh, synthase molecule leads to the uh, binding or leads to the reaction of 
ADP and um, inorganic phosphate to form ATP. Okay, and um, and um, in general, in human mitochondria, um, the breakdown of glucose or the oxidation of glucose uh, leads to the production of about 30, 32 ATP molecules in in the um, uh, 32 ATP molecules during the oxidative phosphorylation pathway. Now, just to recap the structure of of the ATP or the ATP um, synthase molecule, we have our F1 we have our F1 unit and our F0 unit here and there you have its oxidative phosphorylation pathway coupled to um, the electron transport chain and the production of the concomitant production of ATP.